Hi guys and welcome to the channel. Um, today I just wanted to make a quick video about a fog system that I've been working on. So I've actually been developing a full sky and weather system plugin. Um, that'll be coming out at some point after 426 launches. It uses a lot of the new features and uh, there's still a lot of work to be done to be honest. So I'm not sure when that'll be coming out but keep your eyes open for it. Um, but as part of that I was working on uh, a fog system and wanted to do some sort of more convincing ground fog effects and ended up implementing a few things which I think look pretty cool and uh, I just wanted to share with people and uh, yeah hopefully see uh, what people think and inspire some people to maybe have a go at doing this sort of stuff themselves as well. Um, so I'll just jump in the game first, show sort of the features it has and then uh, we'll come back out and take a look at them one by one and I'll try and explain it as best as I can. So if we jump in we'll notice that this fog is interactive. So the sphere interacts with it, so does the characters. You notice these footsteps here and uh, these three spheres interact with the fog at different depths. So this closest one sweeps deep into the fog, the second one not so much and the third one barely at all. And you can see that they have different levels of interaction here. Um, as you might be able to tell already, this is using a ripple solver. Um, so just plugging a ripple solver into sort of the height offset in your uh, fog function will actually give you some really nice results. Just throw some curl noise on top of it and you know you get a fluid sim-ish looking result which is which is quite nice. Um, and as usual any excuse to throw ragdolls around and we'll do it. So you can see the character interacts pretty nicely with it as well. It looks, uh, looks quite convincing. Uh, it's fun to play around with anyway. So um, yeah you might also notice that this automatically flows downhill. So we calculate the downhill slope from the world gradient and uh, use this to drive the effect and uh, yeah it looks uh, it looks quite nice so I'll jump out of here now and uh, we'll go through and look at a few of these things. The first thing I want to talk about however, I'm just going to set this to 2000 which you'll see in a minute, is performance. So I'm running a 1080 Ti uh, so it's an older card now um, but it's still fairly powerful. Um, you can see with sort of 80s, 90 to 100 FPS, depending on how far we are from the volume and how much of it's in view. And so that's the main point here. Any, whenever you write into any volume materials, the shape or particle or anything that you're using to write to it, the more voxels of the fog that that overlaps, the more expensive it's going to be. It's basically the number of voxels it overlaps times the material instruction count. So you want to overlap as little as possible when you write into the fog, otherwise it gets quite expensive quite quickly. This is sort of as big as you'd, as you'd want to make it really. Um, any more than this and you, you start sort of paying the price. Which brings me back to, I set this to 2000 to begin with. Now I don't know, it's not going to make a huge difference here, but you see we're up 100 to 105 FPS, well 9, nine to 10 milliseconds. Uh, if I hit this compute max height, this just uses a compute shader. It reads the uh, the depth of the scene and uh, calculates the maximum required height of the volume. So if I hit that, we're now at a solid 120. And we've cut out voxelizing all this empty space that we didn't need to to begin with. Um, so writing to volume materials is, is, you know, it's not super cheap, but it can be done quite cheaply, especially in smaller areas. And this is more designed to be used in, in smaller areas. Than anything else. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at a few of the things in here. Um, well actually just before we do that we'll take a quick GPU snapshot here and we can actually have a look. So our scene capture which captures our interaction is taking 0 0.1 milliseconds which is absolutely nothing really. Uh, we've turned off lighting and post-processing and all the features uh, in the scene capture that we don't need. Um, which actually, I don't know if this is just a 426 preview bug but once you turn all those features off, sometimes you have to toggle them back on and off um, again for it to work because uh, occasionally I jump in here and it'll be back up to nearly a millisecond because it's calculating lighting and everything, which we don't need. Um, so you, you sometimes have to jump in and toggle it on, toggle it back off and recompile and it works fine. Uh, so I don't know if that's just a bug in the preview or, or what, but uh, that is a thing. So, um, But as we see in our scene here, 
uh, volumetric fog, 4.31 milliseconds. And we can see that voxelized volume primitives here is 3.3. So that's a majority of this. So most of this cost comes from actually voxelizing that space. So that's just something to keep in mind whenever you're working with, uh, with volumes and things like that. Um, right, okay, so let's take a look at a few of the features. So real-time height capture, uh, we'll turn this on for a second. This isn't something you'd want to turn on in game. Uh, this is just for when you're editing the fog. Um, as you've noticed, the fog is obviously relative to any actors that we specify in this height actors list here. So if I go into the landscape and just sculpt something here, we can see that the fog is now relative to this. And if I jump back out into the fog volume here and uh, click calculate fog velocity, it'll also now flow nicely down this slope as well. Um, and yeah, as I said before, this just calculates the slope using the world normal. So uh, it, it's super cheap. It only needs to be done once. Um, so this isn't something that you'd need to calculate constantly in game unless you have this volume moving, uh, in which case you'd need to enable this. And also, uh, well, it is set to calculate the velocity every frame if this is enabled in case that's what you wanted to do. But I wouldn't recommend doing this. Um, one of the main reasons is if I move this sphere, you'll see this blurring effect here. And that's caused by temporal reprojection, which the fog uses to sort of try and get rid of some of these slicing artifacts, which we can still see. Um, we'll talk about those in a minute. Um, but yeah, I, so you wouldn't want to use this in game. This is just for if you're sculpting with it, for example, and you want this to update every frame, then you would enable this. Um, so fog height, pretty, pretty uh, self-explanatory. This is just the height relative to any of the actors. So set this at 100 or if I put this up to like 200 for example and then jump into the game this is obviously very thick but you can see the character now really interacting and these like really sweeping up huge sort of plumes of fog and uh, looks pretty cool it, it's a little bit overboard at this point you might want to uh, tone down the uh, interaction scale which you can do um, I'll talk about that in a second um, set this back to 100 for now the height fall off is again pretty self-explanatory this is just how quickly the fog falls off how thick it is so thin well obviously too thin thinner and gets very thick up to basically a flat fall off at that point there you can see it's very pixelized at those edges um but again we'll we'll put this back to one for now um as well as this you can obviously also specify a maximum world height so we'll set this to 300 for example so now you can see that our fog cuts off here uh, it's very sharp, so we'll specify also a, a height fade distance. We'll set that to 300 as well. And now you can see that we get this nice soft sort of fall off. We also still get it on these very steep parts, though, which uh, doesn't look so good. And as you can see on the sphere, it looks horrible. Um, but that's because it's a sphere, so it should be expected. Um, but we can specify a slope fall off. So if we crank this up, we see that these steeper slopes will actually lose the fog now and you end up with uh, quite a nice effect where it just sort of gathers on these lower slopes and lower areas and a little bit around the edges of some of those actors there. Um, so let's just set all of these back. Um, settings. So extinction scale is obviously the density of your fog. So if you wanted a lower density um, but you still want the self-shadowing, which we'll talk about in a minute, then you need to also turn up your shadow density as well. Um, leave that point five for a second. Um, and you can also specify a max extinction. Uh, so this is just a pretty hard cut off to the extinction. Um, it's just in there, just in case for whatever reason you need to use that. Um, the fog color is obviously the fog color. So we can change this to whatever we want. Uh, leave that for a second. Uh, self shadowing is the big thing really. Um, Without it, I'll just turn it off and you'll you'll see. It's nothing. It's you can you can barely see the interaction. You can barely see that it's flowing down these slopes. Self shadowing adds basically all the fidelity to this effect. It also happens to make the shader twice as expensive. Unfortunately, um, you have to do two lookups of your uh, extinction because you need to take an offset sample to calculate the self shadow. So you're doing two lookups, so it's therefore twice as expensive. You have to look up your fog function twice. 
Um, this trace distance just this is how far it, you know along the light vector you uh, want to trace for the shadows. So changing this to if you had a lower density, you might want to lower this a little bit, and you see it makes it slightly darker. I'll set it to one. That's even darker. Um, I'll set this back to five or ten, whatever it was. Um, shadow density, as you saw before, crank this up, and you can see it gets very dense. Um, this is you know play with this at your will you have it however you want it to look but around 0.5 looks pretty good for this um the extinction color is just the color that the light goes as it scatters through the fog so you can have any kind of colors of fog like a, a blue looks quite cool um but you know you can go crazy with this you could have like a red fog with uh like a blue extinction color and then a green shadow and you get this crazy like acid trip looking thing going on um if you can think of it someone's going to want to do it at the end of the day so <laughs> all right so the the velocity we can specify a base velocity so that's any of our flat areas will have this velocity so at the moment it's just minus 0 0.1 it's a tiny sort of gravitational offset um and our world gradient velocity scale this is how f fast it will slow slow how fast it will flow down our slopes so if i turn this up it goes faster. Turn it down, obviously it goes slower. Um, the blur amount, if I turn this down to zero, you'll see here we get this sort of bunching effect. This is the fall off between our flat and our sloped areas. So if I increase this, we get a much smoother fall off and it flows into each other very nicely. Um, we can actually visualize this with a little Niagara system that I built. These arrows, which should actually not all be blue. Um, I don't know why they are. But these show the flow direction, so we can see that it's uh, it's nice and smooth. There's a nice fall off between all of the parts, and uh, yeah, it leads to quite a convincing, uh, quite a convincing result in the end. So let's just hide that bad boy. Interaction, um, obviously, we can enable or disable it if you want. Um, it's expensive, so enabling it is going to cost you some performance. Um, and auto character interaction, so. Normally our interaction actors are specified in a list, uh, much as our height actors are. Um, but characters obviously aren't always spawned, so this will take any character that inherits from this character base class and it will automatically interact with the fog. Um, and then we can set our interaction strength here. This is a global strength. Um, I tried doing it per actor, but it just adds an extra layer of expense because you need another capture really at that point to do it. And uh, yeah, it just got a bit expensive and it looks kind of fine as it is. You might want certain things to interact a bit more, but I, I am looking into that. So that might be something that comes at, at a later point. Um, and then, yeah, the last point, I guess, was the optimization. So we talked about this slicing before. Uh, this just allows you to change some of the console variables for volumetric fog. Uh, the depth distribution scale. So if we turn this down to 16, you can see the slices get bigger. If I put this up to 128, those slices pretty much go away. But again, it all costs performance. So it's up to you. It depends what your budget is, uh, how you want to set this up. But that's those options are there if you need them. Um, also, our grid pixel size. So we can see up here that we've got some aliasing. Um, if we turn our grid pixel size down, that aliasing goes away. But it's again at a cost it's all at a cost so it's completely up to you how you set these things up uh, and the grid size z is the uh, and yes i said z <laughs> is the slicing um again this is just the size of the grid in the vertical direction so this doesn't make a huge amount of difference uh, see if you turn that up it's barely made any difference at all um obviously if you turn it right down then it does um but yeah, those options are there if you need them. Uh, as I say, it looks not great on, on surfaces like this sphere, but it's not an ideal use case, to be honest. Um, and I think that's about everything. Um, oh yeah, one last point. So you might be able to see that's the ripple solver up there. Uh, this cube is actually an interaction actor as well, but it doesn't move. And so all that does is means that our fog ripples will reflect off this static actor. So this guy does actually have like a slight ripple around his edge as you can see 
um, and any incoming ripples will reflect from there. Um, just that's how a ripple solver works. So uh, you get that for free, basically. Um, and yeah, that's that's everything, I think. Um, I do plan to do a lot of tutorials on some stuff that I've been working on, uh, especially to do with the sky and weather system. I do a lot of work with Niagara, volumetrics, um, all sorts of things. And I know how hard it is to find good tutorials on some of these, especially some of the newer features. And uh, I've been doing a lot of work recently that's involved some pretty complex stuff, sort of writing my own collision modules and event scripts and all sorts of stuff like that. And you'll get to see some of that when I showcase some more of uh, what I've been working on with the plugin. And uh, yeah, so, you know, like and subscribe. And when I've released the plugin, or even before, I should be, re be releasing some tutorials on that sort of stuff. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, hope to see you again soon.